welcome back to SV Basic. You know, we're getting into a groove now. I've been glassing all morning. This is the sixth or seventh layer on this. Just laid this one down. Look at this. It's starting to flatten this out. Feeling good about the strength here. Lynn's been sanding for hours every day. And I know she's getting fed up. So I think we need to shift gears for a day or two. Give her a break from sanding. And attack these. We have 16 of these to eliminate. We're gonna shave these out and glass over them. There's so many because we've shifted all the cabins and interior utilities all around. The heads have changed, the galleys have changed, everything's changed. We've moved, moved bilge pumps, so we need to get rid of these, shave them out of there. And now's the time. I don't want 16 extra through holes on the boat. So here's Lynn, sanding away for hours a day. But look at this, it's knocking it out. Getting pretty close. I think we're probably at the 90%, 85%, 90% mark. Getting real close. These are some of the through holes we're going to be taking out. And they're scattered throughout the boat. I think she'll be happy to shift gears. Hey! Want to take a break? Maybe try something else besides sanding? Something you getting, else? <laughs> you getting tired of sanding yet? Yes! But look at those guns. You're getting all... They're jello right now. <laughs> but when I'm ready. When you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do through holes. I think it'll be fun. Kind of give us a change of pace for a day or two. Start shaving these out. Shouldn't be too long. I don't know. I can't believe we have so many. 16 of them. 16? 16. Some of these I've already filled, but I need to grind these out and glass over them. These were just done in the field, so. You ready to hit it? Yeah. Let's see those guns. <laughs> <laughs> they hurt so bad. They're like jello. Okay. But they're pretty good. They are. <laughs> you did good. Look at this. I think we're uh we're getting there. Okay, let's hit these through holes. Over the years, I've added all of these stainless new through holes and I've shaved some out. These are going to be glassed over. I need to grind those out. We're going to be removing all these. So that's what we'll start with. Just get all of them removed. I'm sure some of these are going to come out easy. I mean, some of them actually feel loose. Some may be a little more difficult. May have to cut them out. I'm not sure yet. We'll just kind of dive into this and try to get all these through holes removed first and see what we're in for. Okay, so the great thing is, is we're not sanding, Emma. <laughs> and you're gonna help us get all the through holes out. Okay. Okay, we have 16 to do. Um, your dad's gonna be outside and we're gonna be in here pulling him through. So, uh, we need the channel locks. Can you grab me the channel locks? I think it's right here. Okay, and then I'll hold it on this side. Or just loosen it up. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you guys in there? Yeah. Okay, we're let's gonna start, start with the one. Uh, let's start the forward one first. Okay. and the screwdriver. Hey, that was easy. <laughs> Hi. Okay, let's do the next one. Okay. Okay, go ahead and uh, start tapping the second one. Go. Okay, Lynn 
Jason's already busted these free. Okay, go ahead and push them out. Oh, and the other one. That one's a little tighter. Can you get that one? There you go. Okay, two more. Okay, this is number five. This one's actually a tough one to get to. It's it's way behind the dagger board. Dagger board trunk runs right up through here. And Lynn has to stuff herself behind her to reach this. Hey, are you in there? Yeah. Can you reach it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that was... There you go. Number five. That was easy. Okay, look at this. Everything's running real smooth. I'm surprised how easy these are all coming out and not one of them ever leaked, but they're just popping out like butter. I tell this one. This one's below the waterline. I can see that it's 5,200 on here. It's the old uh, intake for the Wabasto heating and air conditioning. Are you in there? There should be water in this one. Open the seacock. That's what I thought. That's it? Okay. Now we'll try to get this one out. This one should be pretty tough. So we hit our first snag and we're gonna have to cut this one out. Yeah, it's 5200. Uh, let's just leave this one. <laughs> just Well, that went actually pretty smooth. Most of these just popped right out. Even these ones below the waterline, look at this. This one looks like it was an original through hole from when the boat was made 26 years ago because there was no paint around it. And it's dry as can be in here. Take a look at these through holes. I'm so glad I took these out. Some of these just were brittle. I mean, we just went to turn them and look at this, just snapped in half. We had a couple of them like that, just, just pieces. For the most part though, actually, where was it? This one right here, below the water line. It's been painted so many times, look at that. You can barely see through it. And this was just on finger tight. Ugh. Glad to get this mess off the boat. Okay, good morning. New day. We've taken out 14 of the 16 through holes. I'm leaving two for the last. And I'm gonna prep these holes to patch them. Look at this. 
the hole is uh, just under an inch thick. But we are a, a honeycomb composite. It's a polypropylene core. Uh, this is Nitocore. So we can't do the typical patch job you would on a fiberglass boat. And I'll show you why. Okay. When you're repairing a traditional fiberglass boat and you drill a hole through it, there's your through hole. Now I want to repair the hole. This is a cross section. You grind back the exterior surface and then you make laminations to fill the hole. It makes a nice solid repair. But with Nitocore, here's a cross section of Nitocore. You have all this honeycomb. This is all air filled. So if you grind this back, you're just exposing this core cell material. So what I do, let's look straight down on the work here. Here's the through hole. I put a patch in here of the same core. Now the honeycomb looks like this if you look at it around the hole. And on the patch, just the opposite. So as I inject thickened epoxy around this perimeter here, it fills this whole void and locks this plug in, creates a spline, makes it impossible to pop it out. After that's done, you could grind back all the surface coating and lay new glass cloth on here on both sides. Works out pretty slick. I'll show you how I do it. Okay, over the years, as I cut holes in the boat or through holes, I keep all my little core plugs here. And I have a various amount of sizes, thicknesses, depending on where they came from the boat. And I save these for a reason. Let's dump some of these out. Look at this. This is for doing the repairs later. You know, I may not have all the right sizes here, but I could cut other plugs out of these. And, you know, for the most part, you could grab one of these plugs and epoxy it right in place, shy of the surface here, so when I grind this back, it planes out. That way when I do my glass laminations on here, it gets plenty of bite on the hull and the repaired surface. And I'll do that on both sides. Okay, before I put my plug in, I have removed just about a quarter inch, three eighths inch of this polypropylene core from the perimeter of this. That way when I pack this with thickened epoxy, it has a nice overlap. And I'll do the same thing with the hull. You see I've already started dishing this out here. I'll make sure this is all nice and clean. I'll put a nice layer of thickened epoxy in here, a nice layer on this perimeter. Then I'll flush this out and let it cure. We are working on our last hole. Teal has been plugging it all up and I have been mixing epoxy as we go and cleaning behind him. What are you thinking? I'm thinking I'm getting tired of these. Oh, one day, one <laughs> day and you're tired of it. It's just so many. It's, it's okay. not bad. Okay, so I'm uh, packing in this thickened epoxy, making sure I get it all the way into that core. There's a lot of epoxy there. I want to make sure I have enough. Okay, now I need to pack this. I pack the core here as well. It's like frosting a cake. <laughs> yes, it is. Speaking of, cake sounds kind of good.
we go. You done? Now I go to the inside. <laughs> Do the same thing. Okay, I feel good. 14 of these holes have been filled today. We'll let these fire off and cure overnight, and I'll grind those back in the morning and start getting uh, glass laminations on both the outside and inside of the hole. We still have two more through holes to do back here. They're in a tight location inside the inch compartment. I'll tackle those a little bit later, but we did good today. I feel good about this. So I'll get cleaned up, off to the showers, and it's movie night. So we'll kick back. I know Emma's been looking forward to it all day, so it should be fun. Hey, good morning. Well, the epoxy cured overnight. So I got up this morning and ground down every patch we put in, down to the bare night core. Went pretty smooth. Look at this. I ground them out enough that I could put at least two layers on the exterior. Then I'll be able to fare over that and prime and paint. I'll be putting at least two to three layers on the interiors of all these. You know, I got looking at this and I thought, wow, look at all these through holes. You know, we've just shaved out 14. I've got nine left. They're all above the waterline. I don't have one through hole right now below the waterline. The intakes for the engines come in through the sail drives. I will be putting one through hole right, right in here. Well, probably right about here. And that's going to handle seawater for both heads and uh, supply the water maker. So I got to thinking, is that a lot? Do I nine exterior through holes above the water and one below. You know, I think that's pretty good. I walked over next door to this Leopard 46. And I counted his through holes. 42 through holes in this boat. 18 of them are below the water. So I think we're doing pretty good. Okay, let's get back over here. Start laying some glass. Okay, the girls are prepping the glass for me. Whoops. <laughs> Lynn's cutting 28 circles. I'm just making my own trap strand. I know, you're doing good. Emma's taking all the scraps and she busted apart. You know, we have a bucket of chop strand going. I mean, why waste this, right, Em? Yeah. Okay, you guys are doing good. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> okay, you got all those holes cut? I guess they're not holes anymore. They're patches. They're patches. Yeah, they're all done. We're just waiting for you. Okay, just wetting out the surface and then I can start putting them in. Is that the last of it? Yeah, this is easier. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> okay, putting down the first layer here. This went pretty smooth today, actually. All the through holes have been patched. We got two layers of eight ounce cloth on every one. We'll let these fire off tonight, and these will be cured enough that I can prep these for fairing compound tomorrow, get these sanded smooth, Then these will be done. Okay, I think I'm gonna call it for tonight. Emma's been 
itching to fly Carl, our new drone. I told her she has to finish flight training first. So as soon as she finishes, we'll get Carl up in the air. I can't wait. I'm, I'm just as excited as she is. You getting the hang of this yet? Yeah. It's cool. There's a lot of commotion in the yard this morning. Okay, these fired off overnight, and I sanded them smooth. They're all prepped and ready for fairing compound. Let's take a look at what I'm using. Got everything all set up. This is 3M's Platinum Filler. I just like how this lays down and it sands nice and easy. So we'll be using that today. Just hoping this spray from this pressure wash doesn't hit me. It looks like it's just missing me. So let's start firing these in. Okay, now that this is cured, I'll knock it down with an orbital. So it's about maybe a 64th proud, then hand sand the rest. that project wasn't too bad. Over the course of three days, I probably spent three, three and a half hours a day working on these through holes, but they're all done. These are ready for primer and paint. Boy, I like how those turned out. I mean, you can't even feel those. Okay, it's so another project to knock off the list. I think I'll call it. See you guys next week. Thank everyone for watching our videos, especially our patrons. Without our patrons, none of these videos would be possible. So if you liked our video, give us a thumbs up. Maybe share it with your friends. If you really liked it, consider being a patron. Oh, also, we keep uh, getting questions saying, are these shirts available? They are available. We do have a merchandise store, and there's all sorts of products in there. It's just another little way of helping support our channel. You know? I'm a little humbled each week watching the the views and the subscribers click up it's it's amazing i'm uh i'm very proud of our family and our channel so well enough of that we'll catch you guys next week